Good afternoon. If I've not met you, I'm Tim. I'm the pastor here at Cowboy Church. Family and friends, we've gathered here this afternoon to remember the life of Dorothy E. Alexander of Casa Grande. Dorothy passed away peacefully on February the 17th, 2023, at the age of 82. Well, if you're a front row family guest, they had to hear about my New Mexico connection. So my dad just walked in. My parents are 83 and 81. Dorothy, or Dottie, as she was well known to all of her friends, married Roger D. Camillo Sr. in 1960, and a few years later had their son Roger. Dottie had a very successful career with the Los Alamos National Laboratory and the Computer Security Facility, and in the spring of 1986 married Kenneth Alexander of Farmington. From Los Alamos to Berlin, and finally settling down in Casa Grande, where they met some wonderful friends and enjoyed a happy, loving retirement life. She was very close to her friends and the community she lived in. Dottie cherished the moments spent watching her grandchildren grow and become adults. Dottie, mom, grandma, was a very special person. Everyone who met her and knew her were greeted with kindness, smiles, and joy. We love you and miss you so much. Dottie is survived by her son, Roger, and his wife, Karen, and their two children, Nicholas and his wife, Brandy, Jessica, and her husband, Daniel. And also Dottie's sister, who's with us today, Jane Fouts, and her cousin, Mark Sidabaka. Extended family as well, loved her dearly. I want to read a passage of scripture to you that most of you probably know by heart. I hope you do, but I'll read it. There's not a quiz. I'm grateful to my parents the first passage they challenged me to memorize as a young man, Psalm 23. The 23rd Psalm is for those of us who are alive and well. And that's what this service is for us today is to celebrate Dottie's life and to do that in the company and in the presence of the Lord Jesus. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul he leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Would you bow your heads and hearts with me as we pray together this morning or this afternoon? Father, thank you so much for the day you've given to us. Father, we thank you because your word tells us this is the day that you have made and we should rejoice and be glad in it. But Father, we know also today is a day of sorrow and sadness, a day of saying goodbye. Even though as we come before you to remember Dottie's life, we're certainly going to miss her, miss so much about her. Father, today as we gather for this time, I would pray that we would allow your word to speak to our hearts, to guide our thoughts, to comfort us in the deepest part of our souls. Father, what a reminder to me and to each one of us today that you have always taken care of us, just as you took care of Dottie all the days of our life. You take care of us in every way, the small things, the big things. Father, even as we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, because I know, Father, every time we meet this way, we say goodbye or see you later to a loved one, that we all have to deal with the very straightforward truth that none of us will walk on this earth forever. Father, thank you that in Christ Jesus we have tremendous hope, Thank you that those who have put their faith in Jesus walk in the promise that we'll live in your house forever. Father, I pray today that what we say and do in this place will not only help us to celebrate and to remember Dottie's life, but would also bring honor and glory to you. Father, I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, at this time, we want to give you, family members, get first dibs unless you won't last dibs, the opportunity to share any memories you may have of Dottie. If you can't, we certainly understand. But if you can, we welcome you to, you can either come stand behind the saddle, that's so you can hang on to something, 
if you need. But if you don't, you can, okay, I'm going to be lazy today. You're going to have to walk to the front to get the microphone, and we'll let you speak into the mic. Anybody? And no pressure whatsoever. There, I knew it. I could count on Mark. You don't have to. I don't want you to, because if I try to catch you, we're both going down. <laughs> uh, if I'll explain to you what my daddy was my cousin. Uh, when I was a toddler, and I mean a toddler, maybe three, she came to live with us. And at that point, uh, we developed a relationship that was just exceptional. She, uh, she was my protector, my advocate, my encourager, uh, as my mother would say, he was perfect when he came out and he's perfect today. And that was the way Dottie felt about me. There was something in our, uh, in our lives together that um, I was just exceptionally thankful for. There, there are relationships that you have when you grow up, but for the Lord to give me somebody that special and for the amount of um, care and love that we had for each other over these years, we were fortunate to see her the last day of her life. And one thing about Dottie that was just so incredibly unique is we walked in and my sweetie and I walked up to Dottie and Dottie you know how are you doing how are you doing and the first thing she said out of her mouth was how is my sweetie's mom who she takes care of too uh, but that was Dottie Dottie was never after her own self-interest she was after the good in other people and and what she could do for them and how how she could encourage him there was no complaining and uh, you know I'd read Proverbs 31 but it just it talks about the way man I hope that's the right proverb <laughs> I'm good uh, it, it talks about how a woman can bless and not harm and how she's, she's got others' interests at heart all the time. And that was Dottie. Um, I want to thank you all for being her friends and everybody, Chris and Terry and Margaret and Gloria, thank you. And Beretta, if you need prayers. You bless her so much, and you know it. Um, and thank you for coming. Um, uh, next. <laughs> I tell you a joke about Mormons, but I'm not going to. <laughs> okay. But first, I'd like to sing a little song. I'm not going to sing a song. Trying to cut off that Mormon joke. <laughs> I'm the only guy that gets to be offensive from the saddle. <laughs> Any of our friends and neighbors? How many, are all of you from, well, I know some of you aren't, but how many of you are actual neighbors in the same community? Look at there. Wow. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> I'm thinking about my neighbors. I only, have, I only have three immediate ones. I'm going to tell my wife we're going to start saving money because I'll have to pay them to come to my service. <laughs> Thank you so much. It's so kind of you to be here. Anybody like to share anything else? Come on.
You don't have to. If you can talk loud enough, you can do it. For, well, no, we want you up here because we actually, we're actually live streaming the service, no pressure, because there's some friends and family that are watching on live stream too. So I'd appreciate it if you do that. Um, I'm Lisa, and uh, Roger, here's my pal from childhood, and Dottie's like my second mom. And uh, just what Mark said is so true about Dottie, and I guess one of the stories that I think about growing up with the Camillos and um, going to Williams Creek, and I remember one time uh, Terry Lynn Cedabaca, Roger, Jean, and I were wanting to go fishing, and I don't know what made me think that I could go get my dad's fishing pole <laughs> because I didn't have one, but that didn't turn out well. So <laughs> anyway, I, uh, Rod, uh, Dottie saw that that was not going too well, and so anyway, pretty soon I saw Dottie bringing a fishing pole out of that blue truck and uh, over to me, and uh, we all had fishing poles to go fishing with, and you know, she was just like that. She wanted everybody to have a good time and enjoy life and um, just the, it might have been a little gesture, but it was a big one to me and um, just, she was my neighbor in the Hamas too with Ken um, in my previous marriage and um, she was just always there for us and just really cared about people up there too and everybody in the community loved Dottie and uh, so anyway, and I also got to work with her at the lab, so she was kind of liaison to what I did, and she was always there and had really good people working for her and made sure that um, they took care of you when you needed something. And so anyway, I just really like to say that my mom couldn't be here. I know she would love to because her and Dottie were best friends, but... Um, I just told mom I'd come for the family, and so here I am, and I love Dottie, and I love Raj, and <laughs> I'm glad to be here. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. There we go. <laughs> Somebody warned her, this preacher will preach a long time. You better get it in quick. Um, only a few of you uh, know me, but um, I'm going to try not to cry. Anyway, my name is Loretta. Um, I moved here back home. I was born in Casagrande, and I lived in San Diego for like 43 years. This is my husband, Dan, here. And I'm ready to retire. And I said, Dan, I said, if, if you go anywhere, you got to take me home here in Casagrande. So we got here, got settled in. And uh, I couldn't sit still. I needed something to do. And my, uh, I had connection to uh, caregiving. I worked in the hospital for 43 years. Even off to the side, I, would, I had a passion to take care of elderly people. That's what I did. I connected to them very well. So um, I started searching for a job because I needed something to do, and I knew I was good at that. So I went to Visiting Angels and told them my experiences right away. When can you start? So I started. They said, Beretta, you got your first client. Her name is Dottie. Real name is Dorothy Alexander. I said, okay. So I guess she was... Um, in rehabilitation for a while, if I get my story right, she needed some help. Three times a week I was there. So I met this little frail little lady, very sweet. Um, I knew I had a very good client, and I loved her dearly. And you know, I'm there to, to take care of Dottie, but a lot of times I think Dottie took care of me. She was that kind of a person. And um, there's many times she would, um, I didn't feel like a caregiver to her. I felt like a friend, and she told me that. She gave me a book, um, a Christian book, and she wrote her own words in there, in that book. 
And she told me for ready, and she said to de me and Dan, you know, because Dan's not even working for Vision and Angels, but I got him involved. <laughs> <laughs> because we needed the man's touch that I knew I couldn't do. I said, Dottie, don't worry about a thing. I got your back. I'm the only girl only with nine brothers. And then I knew if Dottie needed something fixed, I'll take care of her. Just let me know. And I did it. Even had Dan over there a few times. <laughs> the angels don't know about that. But I figure if this Nick called the angels, I'm the angel for Dottie. Yeah. Okay? So uh, I did that for her. And uh, she included me in her family. Sometimes I didn't feel like I worked at the top. I forgot, uh -huh. these guys are having breakfast, and Dottie made sure that I sat down and had breakfast. <laughs> yeah, and I go over there and clean, yeah, German pancakes. I didn't know. And uh, one day she said, Fred, I'm going to teach you how to make, we're going to make peanut, peanut brittle. I said, okay, Dottie, I got a lot of her recipes. She showed me a couple rounds, and then she went and sat down. I said, Dottie, where are you going? She said, oh, you got this. Finish it. <laughs> but Dottie was very sweet. I knew I would never give up on Dottie. I never knew I would quit on Dottie. I was going to be there for Dottie. So, uh, but I'm going to miss her, and she's very sweet. Love her dearly. I knew all about the family. So I know all... I haven't met any of it, but Roger, but believe me, I know all about y'all. <laughs> <laughs> know everything. Dottie tells me everything. <laughs> yeah, so, but, yeah, so, yeah, so. Thank you so much. I, I should have interviewed you before I did this service. <laughs> Get some good sermon illustrations. Anybody else? I was joking about the long, long sermon just long well thank you again so much on behalf of the family for gathering today to celebrate Dottie's life and the pictures the stories the memories you know, what's amazing about those things is 20 years from now they'll be just as sweet just as meaningful now that Proverbs 31 did you see I was scrambling looking Here's one. Proverbs 31 says, A greyhound, a male goat also, and a king. What are you talking about? Oh, he means chapter 31. I really wanted to find something really ornery. But Proverbs 31, the last portion and the last part of that says, She watches over the ways of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praises her. Many daughters have done well. But you excel them all. Charm is deceitful and beauty is passing. But a woman who fears the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her of the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gates. I didn't really plan to share that except, except Mark needed me to. Amen. <laughs> and maybe the family. Um, I'll tell you as a pastor, there are some services that are much easier to do than others. And there are some people that are much easier to remember and to speak of than others. Some of you have probably heard this one. I've heard it a long time ago. You know, live the kind of life that the preacher won't have to be stretching the truth when he stands up and talks about you. You probably heard about the one that had the casket, the closed casket. And about halfway through, the preacher was going on and on about how wonderful the person was. And somebody nudged their spouse and said, you better go check. That doesn't sound like the same person. Not at all the case with Dottie. What's interesting about my knowing Dottie, and Ken and Dottie, and their active service and work in our church, uh, is this. Dottie was always, in my mind, always so quiet, always so easy to get along with. Sorry if that's not your experience. That's mine. For preachers, we love these kind of people. Woo! And then she was so faithful to her simple task and very important task of getting here early, making coffee, serving coffee. So it's really meaningful to me because we have coffee for all the regular folks. And then we have a special pot for the irregular folks. Well, I didn't say that. I mean, we have a special pot back there. It's for the band slash the preachers that know about it. And it's extra strong. 
because some of you realize in the winter time, because of the good number of winter folks that worship with us, we go to three morning services, so we start at eight. So if you're a coffee maker and a server, you're usually here between seven and seven thirty, and that's when I would see Dottie on so many mornings. And I was just telling the family when she struggled with some illness, I certainly missed her, missed her face, missed her kindness. Because what many of you enjoyed in your home and what some of you enjoyed with her being your neighbor, we had the sweet privilege of enjoying that kind of hospitality right here at Cowboy Church. I'm tempted to tell some church stories, but I won't do that to you. Let me just say, it's always best when a church is, well, let's say a first impression is someone like Dottie, who is kind, caring, and willing to serve. And so I want to share with you this afternoon from John chapter 14, verses 1 through 6, because even though I recognize many of your faces, a few of your names, I know this is what's most important. And it's what's most important because in John chapter 14, we find the very words of Jesus who had told his disciples that he was leaving this earth and they were not too keen on that. Just like whether someone's passing comes quickly or after an extended illness, no matter when it comes, it's always a bit troubling. And Jesus said, let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And where I go, you know, and the way you know. I'm just going to pause there and say this. As I thought about this passage and thought about Jesus' friendship, relationship with his disciples. Remember, his disciples were students. He was the master teacher. They had signed up for the Jesus School of Life. Tomorrow morning, I'll be talking about the fact that a handful of fishermen, hardworking guys, gave up their career, gave up their trade, gave up their craft to follow Jesus and to live a very different kind of life. These men that had been with him, these men that knew him well, knew him intimately, like we would say today, You might have had breakfast at Dottie's table, so you knew Dottie a lot better than the rest of us. These men that knew Jesus that way, Jesus says to them, and I think it's so straightforward and simple. He's saying to them, don't let my leaving trouble you. You believe in God. I trust, I hope, I certainly pray that everyone in this house and everyone on live stream at the very least believes in God. If you don't, as tired as I am this afternoon, I'd like to take some time with you and and help you see some evidences all around that there is a God. And he is a great and amazing God who has created heaven and earth and has given us the opportunity to live, live here. Jesus says to them, listen, you believe in God, believe in me. I'm going to my father's house. And he talks about the mansions. He talks about getting things ready. And then notice in verse 5, Thomas said to him, but Lord, we do not know where you are going. And how can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. It's really not complicated. A relationship with God was never designed by God or by his son to be complicated or to be confusing or to be frustrating. Jesus has spent three years living his life with 12 men as his students. And now as he prepares to leave and move into the next chapter of his life in service to his heavenly father, he knows that they are troubled, just like Dottie's passing may have troubled some of you. Jesus says, I've got to go get a place ready. So many Sunday mornings I would come here, It's hard to beat the volunteers to Cowboy Church. I try, but I live several miles away. But whether she was here first or shortly after I arrived, Dottie would be busy getting things ready in the kitchen, getting things ready to welcome our guest. Jesus said to his followers, I'm going to heaven. I'm going to prepare a place for you. So if I go do all that work, 
This is Tim's improvised. He said, if I'm going to go do all that, well, surely I'm going to come back and get you and take you to be with me where I am. And he says, guys, where I go, you know, and the way you know. I don't know if you've thought about this, but Jesus expected his students to sit up, pay attention, and know the right answer. He's like, and this isn't complicated, really. The first part, he's going to be with his father. He's going back to heaven. Surely, he says, you know where I'm going in the way. Now, Thomas, I'm so grateful for Thomas. They always call him Doubting Thomas. But I think we should rename Thomas Honest Thomas. Because I believe the world is full of people, and even some of you may be sitting on these chairs here this afternoon, that honestly, if you weren't said out loud, or, you know, that little bubble thing could pop up, and I could see what you're thinking, you would say, Jesus, we do not know where you're going, and how do we know the way? And so Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. I can't make it any simpler. A lot of people have made it a lot more complicated. Jesus' answer is why we believe that a personal relationship with God through faith in Jesus is the only way we can be right with our Father in heaven. That's what Jesus said. Jesus came, he lived among us, he lived among his disciples. He said, I'm out of here, guys. Well, kind of. They knew he was leaving. And then he said, here's how you get there. There's only one way, his name is Jesus. There's only one truth, his name is Jesus. There's only one life, his name is Jesus. Because Dottie had put her faith in Jesus as Savior and Lord of her life, the Word of God, the whole counsel of the New Testament makes it very clear that this is God's ask or His requirement for every human being. Not that we jump through a bunch of hoops, not that we join the best church in town or the worst church in town. I don't know why I had to say that. <laughs> not that we go through a bunch of ceremonies. All those things ha may be important, may have a place. But you know, Jesus didn't say, you guys got to get serious about going to synagogue every Saturday. He didn't say that. Jesus says, he is the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father except through him. To me, a thinking, logical person would immediately ask, what does Jesus say? What does Jesus expect? I always try to tell our people and anybody else that will listen. When you leave planet Earth, you're probably not going to be seeing my face. When you stand before God, don't be looking for Pastor Tim. I mean, I plan to be there, but like Dottie, what if you get there before me? I hope you're not holding out for me to say something or do something. This ain't about me. This is about what you choose to believe in your heart and how you choose to re respond to the good news of the gospel. And it is Jesus alone who makes the bold, exclusive claim that the only way one can come to the Father is through Jesus the Son. It's why at Cowboy Church, we only preach the Word of God. It's why I trust Dottie was at home at Cowboy Church, because she knew Jesus had gone to the cross, not for his own sin, but for hers, had paid the full price and the full penalty of her sin, had rescued her because she had trusted him alone as Savior and Lord of her life. So it's pretty easy for me to tell you what the Bible says when I can say, here's a lady that believed the same thing. Here's why she was the person she was, because of her simple yet real, personal, profound faith in Jesus as Savior and Lord of her life. So as we wrap up this afternoon, it would I have always found it normal in saying these goodbyes to think about the big things of life. Am I ready? Am I prepared? What if, what if today's my last day on this earth? Am I ready to meet my maker? Am I ready to look the God of heaven and earth in the face? And because of who Jesus is and what Jesus did, the real question is simpler than that. Have I put my faith in Jesus alone as the rightful master and Lord of my life? Because I tell you this, today we stand on the promise, God's promise, that Jesus has prepared a place for Dottie. That Dottie, I like I always like to tell folks, and you know this, Dottie's having a whole lot better day than I am. And a whole lot better day than you're going to have. And a week from now, and a month from now, you know what happens. You think of Dottie, you pick up the phone, 
You're going to, with these fancy phone now, you'll probably speed dial her before you know it. And then all these things are going to come back, and you're going to remember again. The Word of God encourages us that are in Christ Jesus to encourage one another with these words. That Jesus is coming again someday. That those who are dead in Christ will rise first. We don't get to beat them to the punch. We don't get to get in front of the line. Those who have passed will be raised from the dead first. And together we will meet Jesus in the air. So to Roger, all of Dottie's family and all of her friends, let me encourage you to hold on to the word of God, to hold on to this truth as the truth and the only truth, and to take great comfort in knowing that your mom, your grandma, your cousin, your friend, your neighbor is safe in the presence of Jesus now and forever. You bow your heads and hearts with me as we pray together. Father, thank you again for this day. Father, I do thank you so much for Dottie, for her life. Father, for the great joy that she brought to others. For her humble service that meant so much to all of us. Father, I thank you for her faithfulness to serve here with us at Cowboy Church. Father, I thank you for the sense of loss and emptiness that when one of your faithful servants goes home to be with you, boy, we sure miss them because these are often hard to find. That will serve without complaining that will serve with all they have, that will serve always concerned about others, not themselves. Father, I do thank you and praise you that you have made every provision for Dottie through your son Jesus. And I thank you today that we can take great comfort in that. And Father, as always, for those who may not know you personally, I pray that they will not let the sun set before they look to you and simply say and believe in their hearts, Jesus, I believe you are the way, the truth, and the life. And I want to go to the Father, and I want to be with you forever.